Jenny Slate, comedian, writer, uh, the show Big Mouth. Uh, Jenny Slate is a white woman, and she played the role of a character named Missy on Big Mouth, an animated show on Netflix. And Missy was a mixed-race character who had a Jewish white mother like Slate and a black father. I mean, clearly, we're looking at Missy here. Missy is clearly black, even though she's mixed-race, but, you know. Jenny Slate has recused herself from the show, and... She's leaving because she said um, black characters should be played by black people. I don't think that's enough. Okay? She's contributed to the erasure of black people. She, and she's said that. She said she erased a black person. I don't even know what that is. I don't know what futuristic weapon, what ray gun she used to erase a black person. But I don't think it's enough to just say sorry and go back to your mansion. No, thank you, ma'am. Jenny Slate has to go to jail. She has to be brought up on charges and she has to go to jail for no less than 10 years <laughs> for what she did. This is not a fucking joke. Stop laughing, you white pig. She needs to hear every night. She needs to hear the bars clink. She needs to lose her freedom. What has she done with her freedom? She's used it to erase black people by voicing the character, a mixed race character on Big Mouth on Netflix. No thank, and cancel Big Mouth while we're at it. Good, sorry, Nick Kroll. Cancel Big Mouth. You're going to have to get a job with your family doing security related matters. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't want to be this way, but I am. I don't want to be this way, but I am. Jenny said, I've come to the decision today that I can no longer play the character of Missy on the animated TV show Big Mouth. At the start of the show, I reasoned with myself that it was permissible to play Missy because her mom is Jewish and white, as am I. But Missy is also black, and black characters on an animated show should be played by black people. I acknowledge how my original reasoning was flawed, that it existed as an example of white privilege and an unjust allowance is made within a system of societal white supremacy, and that me playing Missy was engaging in an act of erasure of black people. Put her in jail now! Put her in jail! Put her in jail! Why is she not in jail? Why are the producers of this show not behind bars? God damn them. God damn her. God, God damn. God, I'm only, I am not, I am only laughing now because I'm so angry that when I laugh, I get, I get, I get angry and I laugh, but I, God damn them. Black lives matter. Do you understand that? They matter on a Netflix cartoon. Put her in jail that Nick Kroll's parents built. Not even the, uh, not even a, a, I mean an underground <laughs> prison. What do we not know what they do? Use Google, dummies. I get it. She's got to go to jail. A secret underground facility where she can be re-educated. Mm -hmm. Not my fault. I want to hold people accountable. They're being held accountable this week. That's it. No more games this week. Tim is here to hold everyone accountable. Will I apologize for the bit I did with Nick Mullen where we said that Orthodox Jews were wearing diapers to, <laughs> to uh, landlord tenant court because they were pretending to be insane so they could continue to rip off their minority tenants? I will not apologize for that. That I will not do because I did not erase a black person in that. If anything, I called attention to inequality with that. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. 
I've had enough. For too long, I've sat on the sidelines while cartoonists have destroyed the fabric of American society. We cannot tolerate this anymore. Most importantly, though, Jenny says, to anyone that I've hurt, I am so very sorry. Oh, I bet that feels good. I am so very sorry. How many people have killed themselves because of this? How many lives have ended because of your show? I bet it's unquantifiable. How many people killed themselves, put a gun in their mouth, <laughs> jumped off a building, cut their own throat, maybe their wrist, OD'd on pills, took a hairdryer and electrocuted themselves in the tub? asphyxiated themselves, hung themselves. I bet all of these black people that are dying tragically with nooses, they are hanging themselves because they found out that Missy was voiced by Jenny Slate. That is, that is a hypothesis I have. It is not proven. It is a hypothesis, but I think it's pretty damn good. So I'm, I'm, I'm asking Ms. Slate, Ms. Slate, and the, and the producers of Big Mouth to turn themselves in to the military. Not even the LAPD, those corrupt <laughs> bastards. No, the military to, be, to have a tribunal. <laughs> uh, we need a military tribunal in this case. <laughs> and they will not have a jury of their peers. They will be tried by a jury of, of people that are selected, the people that have been affected. People that have been affected, failed comedians will judge her. Comedians that don't make any money will judge Miss Slate. People that have podcasts that have 45 uh, reviews on Apple will stand the judgment of Miss Slate, Mr. Kroll, and the entire show. They will judge you, and I hope, explain it to them. Explain it to the people that couldn't even get a fucking free drink for their horrible comedy and have wasted their entire lives, those are the people you have to convince. And the death penalty is not off the table. <laughs> I'm not saying it's going to be, I'm not, but it, it, is, it is a tool and it should be available to the prosecution. That's what I'm saying here. I'm done letting people off. This, by the way, what I'm doing here is what everyone's going to have to do. This is the new strategy with woke people is to go more woke than they are. This is the new strategy. Like when they say we should take down that monument, you go, we should nuke an American city. That's what you say. If someone says, now I want to get rid of this monument, go, let's nuke DC. Let's nuke Washington. You got to, you, I, because you got to, they got to look at you like, huh? Like it's, it's got to be so bad now. Like when they, when she steps down a big mouth, I go, we shouldn't have a big mouth. It's got to go. It's tainted. Mm -hmm. It's over. It's over. That's what you're going to have to do. You're just going to have to, when somebody says to you, when somebody starts a conversation and goes, listen, why not get rid of all these monuments? Go, I, un I will do you one better. I will do you one better. Why not get rid of them all at once? Let's nuke Washington, D.C. Let's get a suitcase nuclear weapon and, 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 and nuke Washington, D.C. And if, they, if they're shocked by that or they argue against that, you just look at them and go, what? Oh, so you're going you're gonna to take uh, the monuments that are offensive and leave the White House and uh, Congress and the Washington Monument and what? No, 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 no. We are going to nuke the Capitol. That is the woke position. And when things get better, and, and when things get better, when the radiation is gone in a few months or years, I don't know. Then we will go and build an equitable society, but we're not, we're not going to do these surgical strikes. We're not going to do these surgical strikes. We're going in with a suitcase nuke. We're going in with a suitcase nuke, and Jenny Slate will be publicly executed for what she has done to the black community. Yes or yes. Yes or yes. Don't get that. As the great Daryl Davis, drunk uh, uh, real estate uh, uh, motivational speaker in Long Island would say, yes or yes. Don't give them, don't give them the chance to say no. Should these people go to jail for their old tweets? Yes or yes. Last year, my family did like a Zoom dumb thing, or, or they did a Zoom Easter. Oh, man. Not last year, but, you know, a few months ago. Right, right. They did a Zoom Easter, and nobody knows what's going on. 
half the people in my family are drug addicts. They're like, they just see them staring. They're like, I'm like, are they okay? Do they need help? They're in some just, they're living in their own filth. We see that. Their Zoom background is just a mattress on a floor. They're like, <laughs> happy Easter, Lenny. Happy Easter. They're in mid-overdose, trying to get the words happy Easter out of their mouth. They're foaming at the mouth. I'm like, who needs this? Get me out of here. I didn't even go into it. Somebody screenshotted and sent it to me. I said, I, I will not be participating. By the way, listen to this. My stepmother sends me a thing today. She sends me a link. Goes, my mother's turning 80. Can you make her a video? What do you want me to wish her happy birthday as Epstein's temple? What do you want me to do? So, I, they, you know these things now where it's like somebody's mm -hmm. birthday. Everybody has to make a video right. and send it to them. Yes. Hi. Thinking of you. Wish we could be there. So, I just, you know. I have my glasses on. I'm like, hey, Dorothea, we love you. <laughs> stay strong. I said, stay strong. Like she's the woman has cancer. Right. It's just her birthday. My black glasses on. I'm like, Dorothea, I love you. Stay strong. Better days ahead. This is what I say. I don't even realize what I'm saying. I go, stay strong. Like literally she got diagnosed with a disease. I'm just wishing her happy birthday. She's actually in great health. Probably in much better health than me. <laughs> Imagine that a fat guy telling you to stay strong. Right. Like, I'm, I look like I'm literally dead, and I'm like, Dorothea, stay strong. Better days ahead. I go, better days ahead, and then I go, stay safe. And then I, I swear to God, I go like this. I go, see you on the other end. <laughs> and then I finally say, happy birthday. It's the most cryptic and disturbing message. I didn't know what to say, and then I'm like, done. And then I just hit send because I didn't want to edit it. Right. So literally the whole video is, hey, Dorothea, <sighs> stay strong. Better days ahead. I'll see you on the other end. Out. And then probably cuts to somebody who's like, happy birthday. We love you. And it's, li it's literally sandwiched in between two peppy happy birthdays. <laughs> it's like, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. And then they cut to me and I'm like, Dorothea, stay strong. When I make it, I'll send word for you. Stay safe. Better days ahead. Just in black glasses. And then it cuts to somebody being like, happy birthday. How old are you now? <laughs> I look like I'm in a safe house. I'm just laying on uh, my bed like this uh, atop. Uh -huh. Hey, happy birthday. I, I can barely breathe. I think I have COVID. I'm like, happy birthday. I smoked too many cigarettes last night. I'm like, happy birthday. Stay safe. Better days ahead. Hope to see you on the other side. It's just the darkest. And you're wearing sunglasses? I'm wearing black sunglasses because I was outside in the pool, and then I get this message like, hey, you got to you gotta wish this woman happy birthday because she gives a fuck. They asked, my, they asked a couple of my cousins who were on heroin. They're on smack. They've met her twice. When, when you have a divorced family, nobody knows who anyone else is. What if they're going to ask her for money. Hi. <laughs> Happy birthday, Dorothea. I've run into some hard times, and I, I want to let you know, if I give you my uh, bank account number, is there any way you can send a wire here? Could you send a wire here, please? I'm suffering, and I need fucking help. Joe Rogan announced that he's moving to Texas, and I want to get this... I want to get this uh, out because I, th I think there's a lot of people that don't know the full story. Joe wants to go there for a little more freedom, he said, and because LA, you know, you have the homelessness and the traffic. Here's the actual reality. I moved to LA about a year ago and I immediately started making more money than Joe on as a podcaster. I was, I'm doing better than him. Our YouTube views are higher than his. Uh, my subscribers are more than his. My ad deals are more than his. Um, in the beginning, that was okay, but it became awkward for us, for our friendship. It was weird to see him at the comedy store um, because I was making more money as a pot. I was a bigger podcaster in a year of being in Los Angeles. Um, my Our podcasts regularly get 30 to 50 million views per podcast, and he gets, I believe, maybe 2 million or 5 million or something. It's pathetic. So 
he's now running to Texas. He's running away from me because I have taken over Los Angeles and I am the biggest podcaster in the world. And I, you know, for him to go out and pretend that this is about traffic is a little absurd. Um, I, I came, I saw, I conquered, and he is choosing to run away. That's the reality. He doesn't have any money. He asked me to borrow $300 last week, and I said no. Um, that's it. I, I will not enable people in their poor decisions. Uh, this Spotify deal is not real. Spotify does not exist. I have Googled Spotify. I don't know what it is. I don't think, by the way, neither does Spotify. If they exist, they don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I don't know what this last podcast on the left is mm. that got some deal. I don't know what these things are. I'm pretty sure they're inventions. I don't fall for it, okay? So when I come to LA and I take it over, just admit that you got beat. Don't start talking about homeless people and traffic, okay? I'm number one now. Number one, you hear that? Hashtag only comedy store regular, not in jail. <laughs> it's a joke. Relax. I never knew what I, I never thought I'd know what it felt like to own a city. Now I do. Out. I'll be deciding who stays and who goes. This is a kid that I got in an argument with because he said he was going to pick me up from the airport, uh, pick me up for the airport. He offered. He said to me, I'll pick you up and drive you to the airport. Listen to this. Listen to this. And then after all, I'm going to give out his phone number and his address. But listen to this. I don't want to announce that he's, should I say that he's? Say whatever you want. I can cut it out if you don't. No, we're not cutting it out. He's having a baby. Oh, okay. He's going to have a baby. That's cool. Yeah. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I mean, take me to the airport. Here's the thing. You offered, you offered, you said to me, I'll pick you up. This, this is why he doesn't pick me up, this piece of shit. It is a half hour before he's supposed to be at my house, mm -hmm. like 8 o'clock in the morning at 7.30. Yeah. He calls me. I don't answer. Now, I don't answer because I'm asleep, but it doesn't matter. I could have been in the shower. You, when you say I'm going to be there at 8, what do you do? You be there at 8, right? You don't call a half hour before. I'm not canceling my trip. You know I need the ride. And then he says, I'm not coming. I'm not coming to. So I'm like, how do I get the kid back? And I thought long and hard about it. I was like, should I? Because his mom died of pancreatic cancer last year. I'm like, should I deface her grave? Is there a way to deface? I've never even defaced a grave in my I but I, you could hire people, right, to deface a grave. What if you dug her up? I'm just, these are the thoughts I'm having in my head. Now I understand. <laughs> these are the thoughts I'm having in my head. What and this is one of my best friends. He's I truly I love the guy and he's been very good to me. I think DoorDash might be here. He's been very good to me and I do love him. He's like a brother, but I'm like, what if we dug up his mother? Or deface the grave. You know what I mean? Put swastikas on it. Mm -hmm. Try to get her kicked out of the cemetery. Then I was like, maybe, because I know his dad and I have his dad's phone number. I love his father. His father's a great man. Could I pay people to call his father as his mother in the middle of the night and pretend that it's the mother yeah. calling the father and maybe she's like, I'm in hell. What did you do to me? I'm in hell. I'm thinking about like, how do I creatively do something? Because it's, you don't not drive someone to the airport. Mm -hmm. It's not right. Mm -hmm. It's not right. And I confronted him about it and he's like, oh, I have Uber. Can you leave it in the, just, we're, we're, we're going to wrap up. We'll eat and then we're going to come back and do more. <laughs> but come here for a second, Brian, because I want your thoughts on this. What if I had, because I have his father's number. I love his father. His father's a good man. But is it fun to get back at him by having someone call the father in the middle of the night as the dead mother and claiming to be in hell? So you like, the, like she goes, yeah, I'm in hell. What did you do to me? <laughs> so I'm like, so now I'm like, now I found out, oh, he's having a baby. Do we kill his child? Like, these are all, because you don't 
not show up to somebody for the airport. What about the dog? I blocked his dog on Instagram. His dog is on Instagram. I blocked his dog because I didn't want him trying to get to me through the dog. Right. I started talking to him since then. But he's he doesn't deserve me as a friend. He doesn't deserve a celebrity friend. He's in the weed business, which is the most boring thing ever. And he drones on and on about grow operations. No one gives a fuck. Shut up, dummy. No one cares what you're talking about at all with your fucking weed business. Yeah. You're fucking working for a drug dealer, okay? He's not Warren Buffett. He's a fucking drug dealer. And I'm glad that you're, I'm glad that, oh, and that's every weed company. That's fine. I'm glad you're making money doing it. I don't think it should be illegal. But let's not talk about it like it's a fascinating fucking bit. It's just not. It's not a fascinating bit. Oh, what do you, you have the weed and people buy the weed. Shut up. We get it. Enough. You're a boring fuck. So, usually he is. He's just a boring, pouty little bitch. He pouts a lot. He's always like, nah, 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 nah. you know. So, he's dating someone who's going to have his child who is a, in the dreamer program. She's a dreamer. Can I get her deported? <laughs> I mean, genuinely, can I get her to commit a crime? Can I convince her to commit a crime? Can I go to her to commit a crime so I could get her deported? These are all thoughts that are appropriate. These are appropriate thoughts. You can't let people fuck you. Am I wrong here? No. I didn't do a lot of this. It, it takes too much effort. We put too much money into the studio. I can't hire people to deface graves. I just don't. I can't pay everyone. I got too many. I'm, I'm paying this guy. I can barely talk. I can barely talk. He can't look anything up. I should have him deface a grave. I should tell him that's part of it, what he's doing now. You go and deface a grave. I've decided not to. I've decided to start speaking to him again on a limited basis mm. to see if he can earn the friendship back. But don't enough with the con. Tell me I can't have condiments, you know? But this is the thing. It's like, how do you get anyone back now? How do you get anyone back? You can either cut them off or you have to go big. You really have to go big. You know, we're going to take a break now. We probably need to reheat the quesadillas anyway because, you know, it's the traffic in the city. is like you order something, you get it three days later. They've eaten half of it. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? These people, all these, a lot of these people living in their vehicles, it's very hard. Like they're, they're sleeping on a, on a, you know, a fucking pizza box. It's like, it's an it's a, it's a utter nightmare here, which is why, what a joy a pandemic would be. What a great change of pain. Everybody was like mad about the pandemic. They're all the worst people. They're all the worst. Oh my god, I hope the pan I don't know. I'm just so upset because we're going to Mexico and it's coronavirus. I hope that it doesn't. Oh, I hope it does. <laughs> I hope it does. I hope you're wheezing on a beach. I hope you're wheezing on a beach somewhere. Uh, I hope your girls weekend goes so south so quickly. I hope you're wheezing on a beach and I, I hope that there's fucking little Chinese guys with fucking, you know, like those big fucking bug nets, uh -huh. and they're just fucking throwing them over you because that's what happened to the other guy. And that, that's where I'm thinking. But I'm going to be friendly again with, with Michael. But, I mean, wasn't he wrong? He was in the wrong completely. He should take you out maybe on a vacation, or he should rent a house out in Malibu for the weekend, I think. You should go big. These are good ideas to, to win back my friendship. Would that be enough for you? Something like that? No. Uh, <laughs> it would be a start. It would be a start to open a dialogue. Yeah. I think that would be a start to open a dialogue. Okay. He is really one of my best friends. He's helped me out when I was like, now he's lent me money before when I wasn't doing well and everything like that. But listen... We can't live on the old times. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we have to we have to realize I did I would feel weird like going and defacing his mother's grave. Yeah. yeah. That would probably be too much, right? <laughs> you think so? Yeah. Ben saying I think that it's illegal also. Ben saying that because he's a Christian, he believes in all this mumbo jumbo. <laughs> Believe in all this mumbo jumbo. When I'm dead, you could. I want you to take me out and fucking party on and fucking throw my fingers in a restaurant and stuff. <laughs> I want you to take my rotting corpse, use it in a, a political. Th I don't even have to agree with. <laughs> I don't even have to agree with what your stance is. You just take my rotting corpse and go all over the place with it. <laughs> I, 
<laughs> animate me or whatever. I mean, I'm I'm for it, you know? I just hope that people aren't listening to the show and they've found out that, or they think that I'm a bad person because I had some of those thoughts because those are normal thoughts to have when you are wronged like that by a friend who says, I'm on my way to work now. I called you, you didn't answer. I thought something was up. So I turned around and went the other way. What? Excuse me? No good. No good. So I thought there would have been nothing wrong with, you know, or calling, or I was thinking about accusing him of rape. Like, as a woman, like, as a woman, creating a woman, or paying a woman, or several women, uh-huh. potentially, to accuse him of rape. <laughs> or to call his parents, like his father and his brother, and say, I was raped. Uh-huh. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do any of it because I'm, you know. But these are all. This is what they call a proportional response. He has your AirPods also. You know, now that I think about it, he still does have my AirPods. I had to go buy $200 AirPods. Mm. I'm going to deface the grave. (laughs) I think I'm going to deface the grave. I really think, I'm, what if I just write Trump 2020 on the grave? <laughs> and so people think she's a Trump supporter. <laughs> All right, let's go eat. We'll be back. <laughs>